What is going on out there, Mountaineer Nation? My name is Coos. My name's Mountaineer Paul. And we present to you a live edition of Hoops from the Hills. What is up? Sorry for the delay. We've had a, I've had internet issues. Paul's had some things going on. We just, it was almost like everything was against us to try to get this show started. But here we are. Again, apologize for inconvenience. Any of you that may have been waiting for, for quite a while in the, in the waiting room or in the chat room, we are here. So let's get started. What we wanted to get under and talk about tonight is there's a lot of coaching vacancies popping up all over the country and at a lot of big programs that could very well outbid, if you want to use that word, West Virginia for some of the top candidates. Before we get into that, though, uh, we've got to really quick give a shout out to the company who's advertised in the top right corner of the screen, and that is Dutch Miller Automotive. This episode of Hoops from the Hills is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com, or you can come in person today to the home of friends and family pricing. Only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. All right. Thank you for sitting through that. Uh, show our appreciation for Dutch Miller for being our show sponsor. Now, Dutch Miller Automotive, I think I said that. Paul, let's. we've got openings at Vanderbilt. We've got openings at Oklahoma State. We've got openings at Stanford, Washington. Yep. Now, just well, an hour or two maybe before we came on the air, if not a few minutes, we find out Michigan is now open as they get rid of Juwan Howard. Another big job that's considered a top program. What are your thoughts about all these opening Ohio State? I forgot to even mention Ohio State. What are your thoughts? It's okay, on all these, we, all these, we can forget about them. <laughs> what are your thoughts on all these openings being being out, you know available at the same time as the West Virginia job? It's going to make things tough. You know, um, the school of thought on West Virginia's financial situation going into all this was they'll be able to pay. Um, do pretty good money, life-changing money for somebody. But in comparison to what Michigan, Ohio State, Louisville, Washington can offer, um, we're going to have to outbid those guys. It, we're just going to have to figure out a place to get that money. That's the only way we're going to get our guy or else. I just don't see Ren Baker settling. I don't see him settling for somebody in this search. Um, somebody is going to fall in love with this job, guys, and it may not be who you want in the chat. It may not be who I want, but I think I'm coming, I'm starting to come to a place now in this search where I'm realizing whoever picks this job has probably chosen us over some people. So we need to consider that and be grateful for it if it happens, because, um, uh, as, as it stands, uh, where would you rank us with those jobs? You know, our, I think we're a better job than Ohio State. I think we're a better job. You know, it, it's up for debate with, with Oklahoma State and Washington, but I think we're in that, well, you know, we're of that caliber, especially when we're firing on all cylinders. We play in the SEC of the basketball world in the Big 12, but we have a lot of travel problems and a lot of people, you know, that's, that's an issue for some coaches when it comes to us, the lingering Bob Huggins situation could be something for, for people to be, uh, to want to distance themselves from and working for a guy like Gordon Gee guys, it's not always favorable around the country, uh, but working for him Baker is. So there's a lot to really look at it. And then how, at the end of the day, it's brass tacks. Most people can get over all that. Uh, if you can pay them, right? And, and so that's what we needs to, to be figured out here is what are we working with? And, of course, that's not something they can just ask Ren Baker. Uh, and maybe he doesn't even know. Maybe that's a Gordon Geek. I don't even really know who who, who actually makes that decision. Who Who is it? Is there a board of people? 
Um, I mean, maybe it's the Board of Governors. I'm not sure. But at the end of the day, I guess brass tacks, uh, all signs point to Boynton, but he, he's got a team that could go on a run and do a Dusty May impersonation. Then maybe he comes with a flavor of the month. Uh, I've, I've been told today that not only has Ben swung, ran slung for the fences on this, there are names that we wouldn't even consider he would ask. They're like big time names. Like he, he's going after everybody. So he's not limited in the search. I, I know that for sure uh, from everything I've read today. So um, that's interesting. Um, I don't know, man. I think, uh, you know, well, one other thing I was going to say, maybe we do end up with a Will Wade or something like that just because of the circumstances, because I don't think he's going to go out without a good coach. If it comes down to, I, I don't, I don't know how high he is on Medved, but a guy like Medved or a Will Wade or somebody, I think, I, I think maybe we get the better coach in this situation. But maybe. Mike Austin did a great article earlier today. I don't know if you saw this coos, but he, he looked at just this year, the three coaches with a, top 50 defense did you see that article i haven't no i did not i, I hadn't had a chance to read that one yet dustin kearns nico medved uh and there was one other one it slips my mind shirts but i can't remember off the top of my head <laughs> okay that's okay but uh but it was though those were two names that i remembered it was there was three names he, he used Jacob Yoho, thank you for the two dollars super chat. He says WVU baseball is beating Ohio State. Thank you, Jacob. Yes. The, the last time I saw the score, uh, it was two to one in favor of the, of the Buckeyes or the Suck Eyes, as some like to call them. Uh, I've actually got Shanna Rose, one of the writers for Cousins Corner Riders, are covering the game for us tonight. So I'll be interesting to see her her uh, recap and her photos that she takes. She takes some really good photos. But Jacob, thanks for the update, man. Um, Eric Wilcox with another super chat, the ten dollar donation. Thank you, Eric. He says, "Oh, it's a super sticker." No comment there. Sorry about that. But he yeah. says, "Super sticker." <laughs> Thank you, Eric, for the super sticker, my man. It's much appreciated. Uh, Bill Sheet Eric. says, three guys said May doesn't fit culturally." Well, I also saw an article today by Ethan Bach, Mike Ossie's coworker, that they're going through a series like all the some of the top candidates, and he's doing a why or why not series which i actually think is a very good idea he doesn't he doesn't seem to think may's likely to land at west virginia because he thinks that may may hold out for the indiana job number one and he may not want to take a risk taking over a program like west virginia that's in a, going to be in rebuild mode because if it doesn't go well it could hurt his stock and potentially hurt him from getting future power file jobs like indiana and plus, every single Power Five job is probably going to be coming after Dusty May. So it's going to be a tough one to get for for two couple different reasons. And 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 again, that's Ethan's opinion. But a really good piece. I'm going to pull up that article you mentioned, Paul, and see if I can find it because I would like to know who yeah. that third coach was. Okay. What are your thoughts on the May comments? Listen, I, I think he's had really two really good seasons. Um, but I mean, I think, you know, a guy like DeVries, the only thing that separates him and Dusty May is a deep run into the tournament. Now that's, that's a pretty big deal, but I don't think Dusty May is at the end of the day, all, almost all these guys, in my opinion, like all the guys have been mentioned. Like, uh, if you talk about even shirts is a pretty good coach, uh, like a shirts, a May, uh, uh, a DeVries or a Boynton. I think all can succeed with West Virginia's resources mm -hmm. and support if they embrace it, like yeah. a beeline or a Huggins did. Right. It, it really comes down to that, you know, because I do think the NIL dollars will be there. So I don't really, I love Ethan, but I don't really buy the risk part of this because if you're a good coach and you have good recruiters or you're a good recruiter, you're going to get the guys. And right. if you trust yourself as a coach, you can win, right? right? Like that that's the scared money don't make money kind of talk for me. Like if I was a guy like May and a, and Rim Baker talked me into coming there, I, I, I would be confident. 
you know, that's just too, but, but maybe that's just how I, am. I, right. I can't, I can't live that way, man. Like I, if I had an opportunity, you know, and let's say, because there is a possibility that people think the reason we make it may is Louisville is going to be swinging for like the J rights of the world, you know, so is Michigan. And, and so if they land a couple big names like Mick Cronin is on mission, on, like if you go look at Louisville's wish list, I think Dusty May is like tenth on it. Like they've right. got some serious big names they're they're really looking at and have an opportunity to actually get like a Mick Cronin or just anybody. They could they could transplant a Power Five coach almost from anywhere. Kyle Smith was on that list. Listen, man, everybody. Or is coming around to Smith from Washington State. That's another guy that a lot of people, the more I look into, I really like to. Uh, so it's looking like he may be less and less likely as people start to vet him and his profile. Gotcha. All right. The, the, I'm looking at that. Chris Jans was one. Jans. That was the other one. Defensive ranking of 22nd at Mississippi State. Kyle Smith is a ranking of 29. Dustin Kearns is 33, Nico Medved 40. Yeah. And that came over, that was written by Ethan. So, so. it gives you some, an idea of maybe where the breaks in the profiles he was talking about could be. But I'll, excuse me, guys, apologize for that. Um, I, I think, you know, were it me in that article, I'll look back a couple years, but yeah. to see if those are, or are, are, uh, any consistency to those, but. Um, that does give us an idea, you know? Yep. And Kearns has been talked about all along as being a defensive guy. That's kind of what he builds his teams on. I just don't want to go back to the Bob Huggins way of you you got one score, (laughs) you know, uh, there's, you know, where you, we miss every, it seems like we missed, you know, way more shots than we made. Um, and it was all about can you get the rebound, you know, inside and opposite the way they played. And mm-hmm. I, I I think that style can work. It's just that we need to have some offensive balance to the next. Uh, hopefully we do. Agreed. Houston is beating Texas Tech 75 to 49 with 350 left to play. Good grief. They're the best team in the country, man. They're going to win it all, I feel like. Wow. Remember Tennessee or maybe. Yeah. We got a few John Beeline fans in the in this chat tonight. And then we got a few that say he's too old, need to go younger. Uh Beeline, well, you know, I'm curious. I wonder if he'll be a candidate for the Michigan job. Maybe. I doubt it. But maybe. Maybe yeah. Yeah, I'm with you, Krista. I, I would love to have the rise, the coach of Drake. I think that would be great for us. But I think if you go read Oklahoma State, like uh, I was on some message boards earlier and people were sharing different message boards, Oklahoma State has all the same candidates on their board as we do, I literally every single one. So we're all swimming in the same pool is the problem. Yep. Like when it Lyle, comes to like us in Oklahoma State and right. Mandy and teams like that. Lazo Barnes says, what's your guys' reaction to Louisville being rumored to go after Huggins? That chill sports put that out, right? Coops. Yeah, and I don't know anything about them. And I, I haven't know. been able to connect it to any other – any other. Yeah, if you guys – has anybody else said anything else? I'm not buying it until I buy it. I mean, it, to me, if Hugs lands somewhere, it'll likely be at a, at a lower-level school, a mid-major. I, I don't know that a Power I, 5 school is going to take a chance on him. I could be wrong. You know, I, I, I've, I've seen him rumor to Texas San Antonio today. I saw that too. Uh, that seems much more likely because that's a that's a high risk high reward situation for them. You know, if he's motivated, like if he's got if Bob Huggins puts energy into it, it's going to turn around. Yeah. <laughs> I don't doubt that at all. It's just you know how much energy does he have after going through all this? Maybe he's extremely motivated. Um, I wouldn't put it. Pa- I wouldn't doubt him. Put it past him. You know, it, I wouldn't be surprised to see. But I don't know if he can recruit to the level that he would want to to win like big there. Yeah. So Krista thinks you Connor Houston's gonna win it all. Um nice. Lazel says he's heard that they are definitely probing. Interest interesting. 
Well, I'll be honest with you. Know, you. He's a, he's an attractive kid. Can I be honest with you? I think it would be best for West Virginia if he does get hired somewhere else. They need they need to be able to, we got to be able to move past this Bob Huggins thing. And as long as he's not coaching somewhere else, it's going to be tough for for half of our fan base to move on. It's going to be like the backup quarterback situation, isn't it? Yeah. Or a coach. Yeah. I think so. They don't need him lingering around the program. They don't, you know what I mean? Don't look, and I'm not saying he would, he may not do that. I don't know, but even the thought of it, it could, could, uh, could potentially keep somebody from wanting to come to West Virginia or at least have them looking over their shoulder all the time, you know? Right. Everything good? Yeah, I accidentally clicked off the screen because I read this and it made me laugh. Oh. <laughs> I, I, made, I swear, I, I forget to check my email every day, it seems like. You better start. Mark's going to quit coming on our show, man. Uh, don't, don't leave us, Mark. Shaggy wants Mark back. Yeah, I'm to the point to where I'd be okay with him at this point. After all this has happened, before the season ended, no jobs were open except for one or two. I was being picky. You know, like, we better land who I want us mm -hmm. to land. Like, that's in my head, I'm thinking. Uh, but now that all these jobs are available at the same time, I think we'd be lucky to get a buy into. I really do. I'm not trying to be doom, gloom and doom or anything like that. But look at the list of, of universities. I, I do think that we could still land our guy. It's just, it depends on, on who Louisville, Ohio State, and Michigan, Washington, and Oklahoma State all get. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know that yeah. sounds obvious, but. Um, I, I do think we could get lucky in you know, Ohio State, Michigan, and Washington or Louisville could all swing for bigger names and maybe get them, but we'll, I don't know. Yeah, I read earlier that uh, it looks like Vanderbilt may have their guy in Chris Mack potentially, which he was one of my top choices for this job, for the West Virginia job. I really liked his resume, and I've heard, I've heard from some folks that I guess you could call her uh, connected – that say that, you know, they're not sure he'd be a fit at West Virginia. But, you know, that's one person's opinion. And uh and obviously I don't know Chris Mack, so I wouldn't I wouldn't know personality wise or culture wise if he'd be a fit or not. But it's, yeah. when you look at his coaching resume, it's hard to argue it. Um I think he'll end up at a school like a Texas San Antonio Chris. So that's my opinion. I could be wrong. But I, most power five schools are probably going to want to go with somebody younger. I would think, but again, he, he is a Hall of Fame. He's a Hall of Fame coach. It's going to be hard to say no to that. So I don't know. And let's face it, he could probably get a Kirk Creasa to come play there. You know, just as one example. And I did not see that rumor, Krista, about Ben McCollum going to Missouri. I did see people mentioning him as a as a South of Missouri, Missouri State. Yeah, yeah, I did see people listed that that is a good, you know, people connected the dots there as a as a good fit. But I, I hadn't actually seen a rumor that he was going there. No, that's another one. I, I think you know, if it comes down to like, and I hate to be harsh on Medved, maybe I just haven't vetted him right. But like, if it comes down to a Medved and McCollum still available, just give me freaking McCollum, and, and I just will see if we can figure it out. You know, like. The pet, he's such an intriguing pedigree that I'm, I'm the most, I find myself fantasizing about like maybe he really could replicate what he's done, you know, with, with a higher level player, you know, and then I think you know, maybe, you know, you go back and forth on a lot of this stuff, but uh, I, I guess, you know, something you hear a lot around here is you got to trust Ren. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Almost want to make a trust Ren shirt. But uh, I guess we just what we need to do is trust him in. Uh, yeah, you know I, he's got a great track record. It's hard to argue. It's hard to argue against him. He's he's hired Ben McCollum. He's hired who's won four national titles at the D two level. He's hired Mark Kellogg twice. We see how good of a coach he is on the women's side. He's hired other uh, he's hired other successful coaches. So I trust his judgment. Um, here's a, here's something Paul, to, I wanted to. Add. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We had a question pop in our heads at the same time. We did. <laughs> Go, I'll let you go first. Do you think it's an indictment against McCollum that he hasn't hired him, or 
maybe if he doesn't hire him. I mean, you hire well, a guy that's won that much. Right. You'd think he'd be like second or third on your list, no matter where he's at. Well, Ren knows. I mean, Ren knows him, obviously. Right. So if, that's what I'm go, saying. He knows. Know what, he maybe he don't think he's a fit culturally. May, or maybe maybe there's just and I, that doesn't mean Ben's a bad guy or anything like that. I, I just some not everybody's a fit for every job. You know, Dana Holgerson wasn't really a West Virginia guy. You know, he he didn't really he didn't like living in West Virginia, for example. One of the reasons he left. Maybe you know, maybe he don't think Ben would like living in West Virginia. Maybe maybe he doesn't think D two to maybe he thinks D two to P five is too big of a jump. There's a lot of reasons. Yeah, but it's a good question. What was your question? I don't remember now. No, I'm kidding. I knew uh, you were going to forget. <laughs> my, my question is, with all these, one up. any of these, no, I'm not. Any of the, I'm just trying to think how to ask it. <laughs> these guys that got fired, like the Boyntons, the Stackhouses, do you think any of those guys will be in the mix at all, or do you think that would be a bad <laughs> idea? I thought about that earlier. Like a Jawan Howard was somebody I thought about earlier, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would have to see a list of who's been fired. Um, I think Holtman would have been the number one fired contender that I I could have bought into Holtman at West Virginia over some of these guys that are available. Truthfully, yeah. You look at what he did at Ohio State. It's a tough job because it's you're not the best job in the Big Ten. You're not even the fourth best job. You're maybe the third or fourth best job in the Big Ten. Uh, and you've got Purdue every year, you know, which is like they're similar to their Kentucky of that conference. Um, and he'd had such great success everywhere else he'd been. Um, you, you want, I don't know culturally if he'd have been a fit for us or not, but I could have, I could have bought it, you know. Uh, Porter Moser would have been another one that I could have, even though he wasn't really fired. Um, I could have bought, you know, somebody like him. So he actually stayed in Oklahoma anyway, but right. I, there were there were rumors, right? You know, a guy like right. you know, but but he's done really well in Oklahoma. I think he, you know, but but to your point, um, I, you really have to look at the cultural part of part of it first. Um, but what does that mean, really? You know, like. I, I guess is it somebody who's willing to embrace it because it doesn't it doesn't have to be a certain profile. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's a certain profile first of all, and I think if but if he, but if a person checks like, if they check every other box, like Ryan said the other day, there's not nobody's going to check every box. Nobody. Right. There's not the perfect candidate, but you've got to, you know, see which one checks the most boxes. You rule out the ones who don't, and then you talk to those guys, and and the, you find out which ones are the. You know, one might be. You know, I'm sure Ren's got an order of things. You know, if you've got one guy who may, there might be one box he doesn't check, but it's kind of low on the priority list. Maybe that's the guy, and maybe that priority is you know the culture piece, or not the culture piece, but the you know West Virginia, you know, embracing West Virginia thing. If he thinks the guy can embrace West Virginia based on the guy's personality or whatever. And you know, Ren had Ren has a uh, a strenuous interview process. Apparently, I remember hearing one of Josh Allert's pressers where he was talking about. He said Ren put him through the ringer <laughs> during his interview. So, I mean, if he did that for an interim position, how's he going to do it for a full time, you know, a long term position? So right. he's going to he's going to make sure he's getting the right person. I really feel feel like. Thanks, Todd, for that comment. We we Absolutely. need to hear comments like that. So I appreciate that. Awesome. West Virginia beats, West Virginia Ohio, beats stink, Ohio five Stink. Five to two, baby. I love it. The suck eyes, as Timothy calls them. Mm-hmm. I love it. My most hated team. Somebody up there asked, what about Billy Donovan or Tom Crean, if it came down to it? Um, I don't know. I mean, Tom Crean had great success, you know, whenever he was definitely at Marquette. Um, the Indiana was pretty good. He had pretty some pretty good years there, but like historically for Indiana, no, they were they were good for most universities. Um, he's in broadcasting and seems to be really happy there. Billy Donovan's been in the NBA for a long time. Um, 
but yes, obviously Billy Donovan would be somebody I would think like Louisville or Ohio State or Michigan might get before us if he was available. Mm-hmm. Um, he would be a hire that they could sell to their people and people would buy it. You know, obviously if we could get him, I'd be extremely happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tom He's Crean still young would, enough. Tom, yeah, Tom Crean wouldn't excite me, but Billy Donovan would. He's won a national title. Have you looked at Tom? Have you looked at Tom Green's like his history or anything? Not recently. I know he. I mean, obviously he knocked it out of the park at Marquette. I mean, heck, he made it to a Final Four with them. Had, that was back. I think when he had. I think he recruited Dwayne Wade, right? Two thousand three. Yeah. Uh, but then I don't think he did as good at Indiana. I mean, he had a winning record at Indiana, right? He just several. He, I think he was several 20, 20 win years. Yeah. But but he uh, didn't. You know, like you said, he didn't fit meet their expectations maybe, but I don't know. Right. But neither one of those guys have coached in the NIL, in the NIL and transfer portal area either, which would be a somewhat of a concern maybe. But they, they'd figure it out, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, because there's – I guess if you have it, you have to hire somebody that has, you know. That would be the only way. Right. Well, I mean, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's something you can figure out real easily. I don't know. I mean, didn't Huggins <laughs> kind of do that? Didn't Huggins kind of leave that to, to Jay Koontz? Yeah, some of his staff yeah. to handle that for him pretty much. Yeah. And he just signed off on guys or, you know, I mean, he obviously met the guys and would see them when they came to campus and stuff, but he wasn't the one out doing most of the right. quote unquote legwork. Yeah. So I, if you've got the right staff members in place, I think you can do it even if you're not necessarily, uh, you know, familiar with it or even comfortable with it in that regard. It's all about delegation. You got to be able to delegate stuff to people. I would think Nate Oates would be somebody I'd be watching for for he, he, he just got a huge raise in extension in Alabama today. I just well, read I mean, that Ohio State and Michigan can afford to buy that out. You know, I, I mean, I'm not saying he didn't want to stay there. I've just I, I've read a couple of places here in the last month or so that he, you know people were going to want him or like a Musselman in Arkansas, guys like yeah. that. Like now that's a now that's a name. I've not seen on most lists, but a couple. There, there's some. There's been some rumors that he's not real happy at at Arkansas, but I don't know how accurate those are. Well, so that would be a that, slam dunk. <laughs> that's one that could be a potential there. Um, he hadn't done again, well there either. What's that? He didn't do that well there this year either, did he? Not this year, but he has in the past. Brad Smith says Mark Rankin is the right pick, excellent cultural fit, coaches tough defense and offensive efficiency, and will be outstanding recruiters. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm coming around on Byington. I, at first, I was not I wasn't high on him at all, but the more I read about him, now he he's finally made an NCAA tournament. That to me, that's a box he just checked that he hadn't checked yet. I'm sure James Madison's probably not the easiest place to win at, and he he. You know, from what I've read, he's a great recruiter. So, you know, maybe he is a guy. I don't know. And offensive efficiency is is very important, and so is defense. And that's what Wren likes. Let's not forget. That's what he said in the press conference the other day. So, yeah, you if you were here, the three coaches that, that, are, that are on all of the list that everybody knows about were Chris Jans, Nico Medved, and Dustin Kearns all had top 50 defenses this year. Nobody yep. else did. Just, just throw it out out there. I'm not saying that it really, that mean really doesn't mean who he's going to hire. But right. he did bring that up as a. I, I would like to see if Boynton has ever had. Has he ever had a top fifty defense? I don't know. At I, JMU, I mean, that that's that's something I'd be curious to know about. Yeah, I mean, my top three right now. I guess my top three. If you want to say my top three, I'm not saying these are likely, but would be Will Wade, Chris Mack, probably Pat Kelsey. That would probably probably be my top three if I had to pick a top three right today. Give me Pat Kelsey if we can get him. I mean, yeah. not over Will Wade, but but uh, it seems like nobody wants to even talk about him. <laughs> you know, it's like you bring him up, and, and it's like nobody wants. He's, all he does is win 20, 28, and 30 games every single year. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he's hit 30 again this year. Or he's, I don't, maybe I'm wrong with this year, but uh, I love, I love his energy. You know, I sent you a couple of videos on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
few weeks back and just his energy like he he is a what you would call a true high energy guy you know i uh, i like him i've heard he's some a motivator rep- yeah i've heard some reports that his um i don't want to say reports like party rumor rumors i've heard that but i've also heard that uh yeah, that's 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 the that's the first one I was thinking about. Yeah, that he's not just not really a cultural fit. And then I've heard also that I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get sick of hearing that. I can already tell. <laughs> and I've also not heard and again. Fit. I don't know how accurate this is, so don't. I'm not. This is not a report. This is a total rumor. I probably shouldn't even be saying it, but uh, since we got time to, you know, Look, can you know, I see? Can day. I see if I'm right? Maybe we both heard the same thing. Go I already ahead. wanted a lot of money. Yes. Okay, so more than what we hadn't talked about that. <laughs> yeah, we both heard the same thing. Okay, yeah, he wanted more money than what West Virginia was willing to pay him, and wanted more. Um, was there was something? There was another. It may have been more bonus money or something. I can't remember more incentive money, something like that. Uh, and I think it's money that West Virginia might would be willing to pay. For certain guys, but maybe not a Pat Kelsey, if that makes sense. Right. Like if you're bringing in a John B. Line or a Billy Donovan or somebody like that, they're going to demand more money, right? Then if you're or hiring Dustin somebody, Mays, probably. Then if you're hiring assuming, somebody from the from the mid major level, right? That's just my. Assumption. I mean, I, but if people have said Dusty May is his top pick, so if that's the case, then you would think he would get that money. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. What's he making at FAU? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I haven't looked. Um, I know it's pretty good. It's not bad. But they, I think he had a 10-year extension there too, didn't he? I have to look. Yeah, he did. I mean, what from based on what's going on, based on what's being said on the message boards, $3, three million is probably the target number. That they're looking at for, for a coach. that's not going to get anybody. That's not going to get anybody of note. Not saying they wouldn't go higher for the right guy, but I think that's kind of their target. <clears throat> well, Matthew, then they're going to might as well just well, say Matthew Swanson. Come on says, in, Nico Medved. Matthew Swanson said he's making one point two five million. I mean, that's right. Uh, going from one point two five to three is a big jump. So I, maybe he would do that. <laughs> yeah, but not whenever you go to. Let's see what Joan Howard was just making. Lazo says three and a half million. It may it may have been three and a half. Lazo, it, it was three or three and a half that I saw. What, rumor has it they offered John Beeline five million last <laughs> over the summer, or were willing to give. Howard him, made, I, don't they, I don't think they offered it to him. They were willing to pay him that. Howard made three and a half million in the third year of his five year contract signed in twenty twenty one. The salary. He can, his contact contract consisted of a four hundred thousand dollar base salary, and over two point nine million in additional compensation. Okay, so that's not you know it's not a world away. Yeah, I, I don't. It's not a, three million. <laughs> I, the way I understood it is three million would be about the average for the Big Twelve. It's not you know it's not it may not be top of the league like it's not Scott Drew at Baylor money. But it's, but it's competitive in the league. Maybe even top half of the league. By the way, did you see that uh, Mick Cronin apparently is the top guy for the Michigan job already? That they've already been talking to him. Oh, really? Yep. So let's see. Oh, well, these are football salaries, of course. Lazo says they're shopping three million, but they will go to three and a half. Yeah, that that makes sense. Start low and hope to settle somewhere in the middle, maybe. All right. Yeah, Bill Self, five point nine million. He's doing well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Scott Drew's highly paid too. Yeah. What do you think about the rumors? Of- guy. What? Who's that? I would love to have also Altsburger. Altsburger. Yeah. What do you think about <clears throat> about uh? I don't remember now. 
Oh, Scott Drew being a top target for the Louisville job. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it, it's it's not going to happen. But yeah, it's a listen. Not not only is he well, it says here he's making three point seven. Scott. Uh huh. Scott Drew. That's what it says here. Huh. I he may he have reworked making, that since this came out. I thought he was making more than that. Bill Self is 5.9. Chris Beard is 5.0. Okay, so this was last year before before everything happened with Beard. Right. Okay. Bob Huggins was a 4.2. Yeah. Scott Drew is 3.7. Jamie Dixon, 3.5. Mark Adams, 3.1. Mike Boynton, 3.0. Porter Moser, 2.8. Jerome Tang, 2.1. Otto Berger was only making $2 million. God, somebody give him pay rates. Uh, that's, probably, that's probably different by now. Yeah. Tang's another name I've heard brought up is that might, you know, if he's unhappy at Kansas Now, that's State. a realistic one. Now, that's realistic. If I were Louisville, I'd go dead after him. Somebody needs Rust. to go get... For us, yeah, why not? I, I would be shocked if we got. Him. I would. I'm just going to keep it real, but I, I would love for it to happen. If he's unhappy enough, at uh, here's the 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 thing that concerns me a little bit, and another thing that, I, and I haven't seen anybody talk about this, but you and I have. We have a president who's going to be retiring in a year. Now, most of us think that's a good thing overall for the university, but you're, you're going to be taking a job, not knowing not obviously Ren Baker's your direct boss, but everything has to be signed off on by the president and the board. And you don't even know who your president's going to be in, right. in a year, year and a half from now, that might be something that could keep some people away. That's kind of a concern, but I'm sure Ren has a plan to address that. I mean, you would think that they would already know the number, you know, like they should already have a range of like, if it's this guy, you can give him this. If it's this guy, you can give him that. Like, it seemed like whoever, whoever answers for the board and Ren should already have sit down and probably talk about, let's say the top five guys that mm -hmm. are realistic and what can we pay each one of them? What are they worth? I don't know that. I'm just, if it was me, it would be, unless you're worried about leaks. You know, I, yeah, maybe you are. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I, the way I understand it, how it works, I mean, obviously they they let Ren do his job and probably trust his judgment. But Gordon Gee has to sign off on any anything and anybody, and the board also has to approve it as well because they're the, at the end of the day they're the ones who have to approve the salary. But I think most of the time the board will probably trust Ren's judgment and, and President Gee's judgment on a coach. And I'm, I'm sure they don't have any reason but not I'm, to. But I, and I'm sure Gordon Geek tells Ren, here's what I got to have. I got to have, you know, this, 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 and this. He's got to be polished. No, no controversy. No, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever he, the president wants. You know, they're not looking at yeah. wins and losses. They're looking at the, how they're going to represent the university. That's what the president's looking at. And then the AD's uh, looking at that. Go. Plus, he has to go look at how good of a coach the guy is, right? Because he's the one that's supposed to know ball. It has to be a ball knower, as they say. <laughs> Civil Marx says maybe Reno. Civil Marx says maybe Reno hire himself. <laughs> hey, you know, I thought know. about that. He would make more. <clears throat> would you? Would a, you be mad if that actually happened? No, nah, actually, I wouldn't. But I mean, he, there's too much responsibility in the AD job. He couldn't do both. <clears throat> no, he would just he would just resign, hire himself as a basketball coach, <laughs> live out his dream. <laughs> That's funny, actually. Yeah, I should. We should do a video on it. Just clickbait everybody. Are headhunters used in coaching searches? Sort of, Philip. They're not really called headhunters. They're they're con, they're search firms. They're consulting firms. Search well. firms. Basically, what they they and they're using Turnkey ZRG. I think is the name of it. The, what they do, they basically come in. They already have a list of names, and they've already what the what the search firm does is they do all the background checks and all the work behind the scenes. Yeah. And then they bring that to the desk of the AD and they do, they basically do all that work for the AD. So the AD don't have to, of course the AD is doing his own stuff 
is checking some things he wants to check too, checking some boxes. And then the search firm will come and they'll sit down together and they'll compare notes. And it, if they come, if they have a coach that say is on both people's list that they, they put that in a pile and go to the next guy. Is he, is he on both lists? And, the, you know, and that kind of helps them narrow down the candidates. At least that's the way I, if I remember how that's how kind of how Ren explained it. Yep. <clears throat> is that and these search firms have a list of candidates that they have already had for years. Oh yeah. And all they do is just update the information. Right. Like it's really all, it's really just selling information. Really. That's what it is. You know, it's a really probably a great job. Uh, probably gets a little seedy at times, a little dirty at I'm, times. You I'm know? sure. I'm sure they've got uh private, <clears throat> private dicks on the ground. <laughs> Yeah. Interesting seeing all these jobs opening up. I hope we can't set ourselves apart from the rest. Yeah, I, I hope we can too, Chase. And I think they can. I think, again, I think Ren will do a good job of promoting the university and our so fans, me, our fans, you know, speak for themselves. Go ahead. I was just going to look at some of these coaches' salaries at Louisville and Michigan, <clears throat> Oklahoma uh -huh. State real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so – Kenny Payne had a $3.35 million plus incentives, an $8 million buyout, but it was over six years, so 2028. That's the Louisville guy. So at Michigan or at Ohio State, Holtman had three and a half. So that seems to be a pretty common number across pretty much everywhere. <clears throat> uh, that's the problem, I guess, with that is everything being everything, just straight up, if, if we're able to pay the same as Ohio State, Michigan, Louisville, uh, Oklahoma State, and uh, Washington, what separates us from them, I guess, you know, at that point, or them from us? I'm not saying that we're worse than all those jobs. But you could certainly make a case that each one is better, I think, in, in a way. Yeah. Um, you know, if the money's the same, then you got to, unfortunately, the brands of all those not named Oklahoma State, I would I would say, are probably just a touch above West Virginia's at this point. Even though basketball, well, I mean, look what Michigan's done recently in basketball. Ohio State hasn't done anything in a long time, but it's still Ohio State. Washington has a great brand. Now they're in the Big Ten with that money. You know, Oklahoma State um, would be right on our level, I think. You know, that's a job probably depends on where your forte is, right? Where do you recruit at? Where are you best? What region are you in? Maybe a Ranger candidate for that job. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good point, Mark. Mark says you just need to get them here for an interview. Get them on. Just that's like a recruit. great point. Just like they say yeah. about recruits, you got to get them on campus. Once you get them on campus, you can. It's a lot easier to lock them in. Uh, we got 120 yeah. people in the in the chat uh, or on on the live stream. A lot of people in the chat. Hard to keep up with all the comments. So if you want to make sure you steer the uh, conversation in the direction you want it to go, drop a super chat in the box. Hit the dollar sign where it, where it says post a comment or say something, and it'll highlight your comment for us. And it's also a way to donate to the show and support what we're doing here. You can also hit like. That's that's absolutely free. James Long for somebody coach. Mentioned, Jacob Yoho. What's that? Somebody mentioned Mark Turgeon. Yep. Uh, that's actually a pretty crazy name. He's only 60, 59, actually. Uh, I didn't realize he played at Kansas. But he, last three jobs are Wichita State, Texas A&M, and Maryland. Now he's at Jacksonville State. Uh, that would be an interesting one, you know. I'm not saying he's uh, name on any list. Well, well there's maybe a lot I'm of, wrong with the There are a lot of people who think that Ren could pull a rabbit out of a hat and get somebody that nobody's even thought of. You know. Yeah. His last three seasons at Maryland was well. Let's go last five. Twenty-three and eleven, twenty-four and seven, seventeen, fourteen, and then he was five and three and got fired. But I mean, if you look at what he did at Maryland, he went 28 and 7, 27 and 9, 24 and 9, 23 and 11, 24 and 7, 
I mean, he did really well there. <laughs> but, you know, you go back to 2015, he would have been about what Byington is now in age. So, to me, I always factor in age. It's like 10 to 12, 10 to 15% of it for me. Maybe yeah. not that much, like 10% of it. Because I, I do think, you know, in my life, what I've noticed is people get older, they work smarter. Uh, but sometimes in college, a game like college basketball, it's true, just brute, blunt, grunt work. You know, like, I don't, I don't know outside of on the court X's and O's what kind of tricks you, you can do to beat the next guy out in a transfer portal era where you pretty much get, it's like an everyday thing, you know, which is why you've seen so many guys get out of the business that are older. Yeah, right. There's a huge trend of older coaches retiring that probably would have stayed in it a little longer right now. Yep. Jacob Yoho wants But Eric yeah, he's Stevenson. only 59. Eric Yoho wants – Jacob Yoho wants Eric Stevenson to be the coach. <laughs> Maybe in 10 years, yeah. Chris Jans from Mississippi State, donor pays buyout. Why would ESPN randomly mention him? The odds are on a sitting power coach. Yeah, actually, I'm glad you brought that up, Pat, because I was going to bring that up probably an hour ago. Well, not that long. Maybe 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago. That ha that had to have been leaked because Jans, the combination of we've heard coups that Rennes swung and missed on multiple head coaches, and one is at least still considering the offer. Right. Uh, and, and then couple that with a completely di excuse me, different source at ESPN saying that Chris Jans, and, and they don't miss at ESPN. So if Chris Jans was probably spoken to, that it's gotten back to ESPN somehow. Um, so I wouldn't phase him out. You know, I wouldn't yeah. phase him out. And I would be pretty happy with that hire, considering what's out there. Well, there's a connection there. I mean, you know, Jimmy Bell played <laughs> places. He can he can kind of speak to what West Virginia is about. I'm sure he and Ren don't really know each other that well, but he can speak to the facilities. He can speak to the uh, the fan base, that kind of thing, right? Yeah, and he makes 3.2 at Mississippi State right now, so we would really have to up the ante for him. Yeah. To be Unless – Is he worth it? You know, I – Unless he's unhappy and he just and he wants out, you know. So, I mean, who would have thought well, Trev Alberts, that's a, Who would have thought Trev Alberts was going to leave his alma mater, AD job his alma mater? Right. You know? Right. Well, I mean, Chris Mack did the same thing, you know, to, when he left. So Xavier. Right. So it happens, you know. Uh, I, it's going to be interesting, man. I, I, I. I I like that we all obsess over this day in and day out until it happens, you know? Oh, yeah. We can all obsess over it together. So. I was talking to somebody today, actually, and I, they were they were like, man, I'm sorry that it's been such a bad season. I'm sure it's not good for your podcast. And I'm like, well, the season actually, wasn't, but this coaching search thing, everybody's interested, you know? So, yeah, if you combine the, like, the Bob Huggins news and, and what that did, and, uh, the following fallout, and actually – don't I mean listen, I would trade it for it not to have happened, Me but too. it actually helped us grow a little bit. It did. You know? But I would I'd still rather have it. I'd still rather have West Virginia playing in in the NCAA tournament. The team that we were gonna yeah. have, you add Joe Toussaint, and Trey Mitchell, just those two guys alone to the team we just had. That's a pretty full team. I do believe that team would have been much better. But uh and especially if McGee and Oconk over there for defensive rebounding purposes. Then you're really cooking with gas. Um, you'd have to obviously like some tracks. Slazinski, who probably wouldn't be there, um, and maybe a cook, but I still think it would have been fine. Yeah. Civil Mark, thank you for the super chat, my man. And thank you for the kind words. He says, keep up the good work. It's much appreciated. Thanks, Civil Mark. Uh, Jeff, don't act us like it's not killing you, man. <laughs> we know it's killing you, Jeff. Steve Somebody McKee's mentioned Bucky McMillan. Yep, I was going to say the same thing. What do you What do you know about him? I don't I don't know anything about him to be honest. So but I got to lean on. People mention him all the, the time. I got to lean on the expert, man. <laughs> well, he's a young coach. He's like forty years old. Uh, he's at Sanford, 
which is in the SoCon, and he's he's done really well recently. His his early career, it, it, in my opinion, it wasn't the greatest, but now he's like three thirty three and seventy four, something like that, crazy. Like that's his record. Um, he's won a couple tournaments there in the SoCon, uh, but they, they people call it like buckyball, you know, like that's a, the term you hear a lot. Um, let me see if I can pull something up on him. By the way, that's just, real, I want to give a shout out to the people who are watching on X real quick. I, sometimes I, we forget that, that we're streaming on there as well. We're trying to build, we're trying to build our following over on that platform as well. We've kind of just started our account there a couple months back. And, but if you're watching on X, be sure to come over on YouTube, check us out where you can see all of our content, all of our past videos, all of our past live shows. Because we you know we don't upload everything to Twitter, only the live shows go to Twitter. So the pre-recorded right. stuff goes goes straight to YouTube. Go ahead, Paul. So if you count what he did in high school, he's three thirty three and seventy four. So he he was obviously an incredible high school coach. I forgot about that part. I did my research on him only because I've researched all these guys yeah. at least once. Uh, he's 77 40, 77 and forty in college which is like 65%. Mm-hmm. Um, but you look at what he's done at Sanford, 6-13 and 13 in year one. He's been 21-11, 21-11, and now he's 29-5. and 15-3, uh, 15-3 in conference, and he's been first the last two years in the SOCON. Uh, so they'll be in the tournament. But there's a lot of people that love what he does there. Uh, yeah, here it is. McMillan drew attention for his up-tempo and aggressive style of play, nicknamed Bucky Ball, and his team posted a 96-83 upset at Belmont in December. In his first season, Sanford finished sixth. That don't matter. But he's known to be an innovator. Uh, a lot of people think he's going to be a big deal. He's only 40. Um, but I, I think for West Virginia to grab him when Ben McCollum is sitting right there – I think the difference is this guy's coaching D1, right? And, and, and McCollum is it? Right. Uh, but if you're going to reach down, I don't know. I, I love Bucky. I'm not saying he can't be a great coach. I just – some people are sold on that guy is all that's all I can say. I'm not saying I'm, I, I'm not saying I'm not sold on him. I just think he would be a reach given what's available. Like if – if there's Dusty Mays as a viable candidate or something like that, you know, we just don't know what we don't know. Like, I don't know who's really going to be available for us or not yet. So hopefully we'll get some clarity on that, you know, before yeah. the next, it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, through next month before we figure it out, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. Chris Sasson says that one, I seen McDermott on the list from Creighton. I will take him. Yeah, he was on the list, but he has since locked up. Well, Creighton's locked him up. They've given him an extension there. And all indications are he plans to retire at Creighton. And I think they, they're they probably pretty close to taking him off the hot board uh, is w- what I'm seeing in here. Paul, are you seeing in here the same thing? Yeah. The, the McDermott's yeah. pretty much out. Yeah. Well, and what are your thoughts? On, there. Yeah. What are your thoughts on uh, the Wazoo coach, Kyle Smith? Yeah, man, he uh, he's really starting to grow on me. You know, just there's a lot of people who think he's going to be a really good coach the next spot he lands at. Like Washington State had three hundred thousand dollars, and I just looked it up yesterday. They had three hundred thousand dollars to spend on NIL. He he went and got he he put he's put this team together with a bunch of kind of like what you would consider. I'm trying to think of like the comparison would be basically a bunch of defensive minded players and have really brought on their offensive game. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's done extremely well at developing those players in a short amount of time. And this is basically almost an all transfer type deal for him. Almost not all. So uh, I, I don't claim to be an expert on, Washington State, but just based on all I all I know is that people I really respect are buying in on him, 
uh, especially the guys at Rivals. So uh, it's had me take a little bit deeper look. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Swanson says, according to Trilly, Kyle is heavily linked to the Stanford job. That doesn't surprise me. He is linked. Me. He is He's linked on the West there. Coast. Well, and to think about this, he, he's the coach of the year in the pack. He's the Naismith coach of the year finalist. So if you're Rim Baker, those are things you can sell people. Uh, you you got to think, if you're sold on Rim Baker and you got a guy that you really like that you think maybe the fan base not be, might not be happy with, well, mm-hmm. if that guy is a finalist for coach of the year, if he wins his conference coach of the year award, that's definitely something you can say. You know, he here's what he did, you know. Um, so you don't get the Naismith uh, final. You're not a Naismith finalist if you didn't do something really good, right? Right. I've been telling people for weeks that the Washington State job is the hardest power five job in basketball. But people don't want to believe that. They think it's just, you no, know, it's probably no different than, you know, Pitt or something. Mm-hmm. But it's not true. <laughs> it's way out there in an obscure spot where everybody's fighting for the same California players uh, in a state where there's hardly no good basketball. So it's similar to us. Yeah. Chase Strickland says, any favorite to land the job as of now? Now, by favorite, I'm assuming you mean guys we think that are not necessarily our top choice, but guys who we think are more likely to get the if job. If you had to put a bet on it, who do you, if you had to bet on it right now? <clears throat> One guy, am I picking just one guy, or am I going with three yeah. guys? What's the number here? What well, put me in, just just pick a couple. <laughs> he needs all the details. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was trained right. that way. I didn't used to be that way. I know. Uh, it's all right. I, I'm going with Nico Medved or Mark Byington. You broke my heart, Medved. I, I just I keep. A lot of the West Virginia media people are saying for he seems to be really high on the list for whatever reason. Some people in the media like it, some people don't. But I don't know. I think uh what do you what are your thoughts? Buying I think Byington is seems to be the leader of the clubhouse. Yep. So Silver Mark says he would bet you check your email once a year. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> no, he checks I'm it check twice, it right. Mark. He checks it twice. I'm he checking it right now. He checks it in June and December. Right now. June and December. I'm checking it right now. But Chase, we'll again, it's, it's a total guess. I'm trying to I'm trying to read we're just trying to read the tea leaves. Oh, Bryce Drew's another name we hadn't talked about, Paul. Thank you, Lizel, for reminding yeah. me. He showed up on the hot board this morning or yesterday. 24 right. 7 hot board. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, Valparaiso's done really well. And, and now he's uh, at, uh, where's is he it at? Grand Canyon? Grand Canyon. Is yeah. it Grand Canyon yep. now? Yep. Yeah. Is, I'm yes. sorry. I, I don't know what I was thinking there. My, I had a brain fart. Sorry. I couldn't, I couldn't remember either, but yes, Grand Canyon. You know, I think that last name, anytime that last name is, comes up, uh, you know. Well, I mean, look at his coaching pedigree. Homer, now his brother Scott. He's doing – I mean, it looks like they're kind of like the – they're not quite as not quite as good as the Harbaugh's. Harbaugh's have won national championships and Super Bowls, but uh, they're kind of in that, you know, same vein as a coaching family, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, that's a name. <laughs> you know, I think to get to him, you you, you got to go through a few others for me. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, he's, I'm not real high on it either. I, I just, I mean, all of his jobs have been at a lower level, if I'm not mistaken, right? Or did, did he coach it? Did, did he coach at a Power 5 school for a he while? He coached at Vanderbilt. Went? That's right. Pretty sure. Let me check. Let me look. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, he was at Vanderbilt from 16 to 19. How did he do? I don't. Uh, let's see. All right. 
after five seasons. Let's see. I think I remember reading he did pretty well there. Oh, yeah, that's right. In 2018 to 19, I do remember this. He showed promise because he was able to sign five-star recruits Darius Garland, yeah. Simsola Chateau, along with four-star recruit Aaron ne Nesmith. Yeah, but I don't think he's a lottery pick. Yeah, he had a top five recruiting class there, if I'm not mistaken, but he but they didn't win with it is the problem. Uh, let's see. Final 20. Yeah, they lost 20 games in a row. And it went 0 and 18 in the SEC. Woo. Yeah, not good. <laughs> not good. If he's no. on my list, I'm yeah. moving him. Yeah. That's wild, isn't it? Yeah. Not sure how he even popped up on the list. But a lot of people, you know, Vanderbilt, I'm sure, is not an easy place to coach. Because they're at the number one, their academic standards are so strict that it's, you know, it makes it harder to recruit. Similar to Stanford. But Virginia's been able to do it. You know, they won a national title. It can be done, but it takes the right guy, the right fit. Jerry Stackhouse, a lot of people like Stackhouse, didn't think he would get fired from Vanderbilt. But here we are. <laughs> what is that? <clears throat> Who's posting that? Mark. Mark. Mark who? The guy's been emailing me. <laughs> oh. Remember? You have to remind me when you, when we get off. Dude, I'm my brain's fried right now. Mark, civil Mark. Oh, civil Mark. My bad. The guy in the yeah. chat. My fault. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. All right. Well, listen, we've been on here an hour. Uh, I have got a long day ahead tomorrow. I have to coach a basketball tournament, first one of the season. So I have to get up bright and early and head, get down, head down the highway. Got to have to coach at least three, maybe four games tomorrow. So um, I'm going to have to hit the sack pretty soon. Paul, is there anything else you want to mention before we call it a night? Just be patient, guys. You know, I think you know we'll uh, we'll continue to update this hopefully daily, um, but definitely every other day. If Coos can't make it sometimes because he works a lot more than me, um, I'll jump on. Even if it's just me, sometimes we'll have a good time. Yep, yep. We uh, we'll do our best to keep you guys posted. And you know, somebody earlier in the chat mentioned, "Hey, you guys are going to do a live when they announce the coach." We're going to try our very best to. I can guarantee you that. But anyway, appreciate everybody for it. Says Paul, how did your nephew all oh, St. Rose for a game? He liked it, man. He loves anything you can run around and kill people. So <laughs> uh, it's like Grand Theft Auto, similar to Grand Theft Auto in the structure of the game. It's not nothing like it. Like really, like you get powers and all these crazy things you can do. But yeah, he enjoys it. He loves flying around and stuff. Once you finally got the powers, I had to get all the powers for him. But uh, yeah, he likes it. Thanks for asking, Lytle. That was cool. Uh, all right, anyway, don't forget to check out Dutch Miller Automotive for your automotive needs. Thanks to Chris Miller over there, the president of the company, and all of his staff. Uh, they've been good to us. We appreciate them. And thanks to everybody for hopping in the chat. We're done. You don't want that, Mark. You think 9 and 23 was bad. <laughs>